to another Van Tour video with me, Tom Davis from Escape Camper Van Conversions. In this particular video, I'll be walking around my latest conversion, highlighting some of the features and talking to you about some of the thought processes that went behind those features. This particular conversion was built on a 2019 automatic long wheelbase VW Crafter. It was supplied to me, to me by my customers, Dave and Jade from Wheelchair and Wanderlust. And as the Instagram name suggests, Dave actually uses a wheelchair. That obviously hasn't stopped Dave and Jade from getting out, finding an adventure and traveling. So what we did with this conversion is we've tried to create a stylish, cozy, uh, spacious interior and still keeping all the necessary features to accommodate Dave and Jade's needs. So we'll have a closer look at all that in a minute, but I've got to say, I reckon we played a blinder. So if we start by looking at some of the exterior features, the first thing that probably catch your eye is the half wrap vinyl artwork. The design was chosen by Dave and Jade and I think it's a nice tasteful feature. It adds a lot more character to the van and it just transforms it from that plain white panel van look without it being you know, too overpowering. If you have a look on top of the van, you'll notice that we've fitted the roof rack this particular roof rack was supplied by a company called Fruit Runner and it's the slimline edition specific for VW crafters. When we were fitting this rack, we had to do a bit of modification work to allow the slats to fit around the skylights in the Max Fam. So what we did, we cut the cross members, made a few aluminium support brackets and we bolted it all back up to suit the, the roof layout. We've got a huge 305 watt solar panel that was then bolted directly to the roof rack and front runner also supplied us with this light bar that's mounted to the front. This light bar comes with a little keyring remote and it's got various settings that allow you to have the light on permanently. Uh, it can also flash an SOS signal and then it's got loads of other different strobe effects. As I mentioned earlier, Dave uses a wheelchair. So one of the main additions that this van came with was the wheelchair lift. Now obviously this lift is an essential part of the van, but it did cause a few complications with the parts of the conversion. The lift takes up loads of space under the van that we'd normally just fit standard sized underslung water tanks and gas tanks into. But as that wasn't the case with this build, we just had to use what was available to us and make it work. So with the gas tank, we removed the spare wheel from below, mounted it on a bracket on the back door and then fitted the button tank in its place. This button tank is an absolute beast as well. It holds 52 litres of gas, so once it's filled, it lasts you forever there. As for the water tanks, they were custom made to suit the space left available. We managed to get approximately 60 litres of fresh water and a 40 litre waste tank. So all things considered, that's not bad at all. Eh? Right, so we've seen plenty of the exterior. So now I think it's time to have a look at the interior and I think we'll start with the cab. Some of these features that are fitted up in the cab were added before the van got to me, but definitely still worth a mention. So Dave and Jade will be sharing the driving on the travels and for that to be possible, they need to add in some hand controls for Dave. So what you have to do is you flip the pedals up out of the way, you attach a steering wheel hand control, and then by pulling or pushing on this lever behind the steering wheel, it allows Dave to accelerate or apply the brakes. It's also got a little switch on there to operate the indicators as well. So with all this now being fitted, it allows Dave to have full control and drive the van all with just his hands. Another thing that Dave and Jade added was air suspension to the rear axle so that they can slightly adjust the height of the van. Because the wheelchair lift is already so low to the ground and we've added a load of weight with all the furniture inside, this will just help to keep everything off the ground on those bumpy roads. So moving out of the cab and into the living area. With this conversion, what we try to do is carefully plan the layout to best accommodate Dave, Jade, the two little dogs and of course Dave's wheelchair. So it was important for us to make it spacious enough for Dave to still be able to manoeuvre about, but still keep those essential functionalities to make it comfortable. Aesthetically, we've tried to keep it bright and open with white walls, ceiling and upper cabinets. And then what we wanted to do is add a mixture of natural colours and textures. So for the main feature colour, we went for a forest green in the lower cabinets. 
and then we paired that with wooden colours and textures in the flooring. The natter came webbing in the upper cabinets. Yeah, the custom made wicker baskets and other little accessories throughout the van. To add a little bit of a modern vibe into the mix, we went for a marble effect worktop, hexagon marble tiles and handles, and added a few little features of brass dotted in there. Within this kitchen, we've got a deep inset sink with a brass tap. We've got a 50 litre draw style compressor fridge by Dometic and a Dometic top line two burner hub. As I mentioned before, we've got an underslung gas tank that supplies the appliances with gas. In this build, all that is, is the hub and also we've got a Truma 40 combi boiler that we've put in the garage space. The combi boiler gives us warm air to heat up the van, but it also gives us the hot water that we need for the shower and the sink. The combi is a dual fuel and what that means is that it works on both gas and mains electricity. You can also use both gas and electric at the same time. So to get that water from the tank to the combi boiler and then eventually out of the taps, we've got to use a pump and the pump we used was a shore flow pressurised pump. So as long as that pump's got power to it, all you have to do is open the tap and then what happens is that pump recognises the drop in pressure, it kicks in and out comes the water. So combining power and practicality, we've still got plenty of storage and worktop space in this kitchen. And what we've got here is four drawers that are all mounted on a soft closed slider, two decent sized cupboards in the base unit and obviously two wall mounted cupboards as well. Next to the kitchen, we made a floor to ceiling unit that in the bottom section has got a dog crate. And on top of that, we've got four shelves, each with these amazing wicker baskets that were custom made, especially for this unit by a company called Somerset Willow. There's nothing better than being parked up off the grid for a few days and having the luxury of a nice hot shower and a decent toilet to sit on. So to make that possible with this layout of van, we had to make our own custom fiberglass shower tray that fits over the wheel arch. So what we've done with that shower tray is we've raised the box on the side a lot higher so that it can double up as a seat. And then also in this shower enclosure, we've got a simple compost and toilet and we've got a stylish black mixer shower that's got two mountain brackets so you can choose your preferred position. The walls in here are all lined with a plastic tile effect shower paneling. It's really good stuff to use and it's easy to work with. It just clips together like tongue and groove paneling and it's lightweight which obviously is always a good thing when you're building vans. One of the big debates when it comes to building vans is how much or a fold out bed. Now I know everyone's different, so everyone's got their own preference, but I think more recently I have seen a bit of a shift and people are leaning more towards the fixed bed. And obviously that's what we've gone for in this build. But what we did include was a fold out seat and a fold out guest bed. Uh, and you know, we just wanted to do that to get some of those space saving benefits of a fold out. Now I'll show you that stuff in a minute, but for now, so about this bed so it's narrower than a standard double obviously to accommodate this the shower cubicle and i know it wouldn't be suitable for for everyone but if you've if you've ever built or you know planned a van you'll know that you can't always have everything so sometimes you do have to make a bit of a compromise to to make the the van work overall and that's that's what we've had to do with this the mattress that we've fitted here is just a standard IKEA foam mattress that we've cut down and had the cover restitched to suit the shape. It actually works perfect with this bed so that you can sit up and the mattress just bends exactly where it needs to without too much resistance. We've also included at the top of this bed um, brass reading light, a USB port and also a few shelves on the opposite side. So at the foot of the bed is where we fitted the fold out seat and the fold out guest bed. So essentially what we've got here is a flap stroke seat that hinges up to reveal some brackets that we fabricated. And what these do is the brackets swing out, the flap or seat drops back down and the brackets just support that seat so it can be sat on. Now once the seat is set up, we have got a couple of positions where we can mount the lagoon table that we keep stored down the side of the kitchen. One position is here 
on the wall next to the fold out seat and the other is behind the passenger seat that we've got mounted on a swivel base this just gives us more options as to where you can set up to eat use your laptop or do whatever you want to do and it allows the space by the bed and access to the shower to be kept open if needed now to make the guest bed you lift the seat base right up and secure it out of the way you pull out the bifolding bed frame that we've made you take out four bed slats that we've also got stored underneath the main bed and then you locate them onto the dowels of the bed frame this creates a rigid base for you to then lay out the other cushions creating a small bed when building camper vans you want to make use of every inch of free space so also built into the foot of this bed we've got a couple of storage compartments one that's just purely for storage and the other we've has the gas manifold in at one end of the van directly above the bed we've got a sky max roof light and at the other end of the van over the kitchen space we've got a max fan deluxe now the max fan in my opinion is the best roof fan available it comes with a remote control it runs dead quiet it's got multiple speed settings the fan operates and blows air in both directions it can be used when you're driving and it can also be used in the rain without water ever getting in We've positioned the fan and the skylight at opposite ends of the van like this so by opening the skylight and setting the fan to extract you can create a nice breeze that will flow from one end of the van to the other. For the windows in this van we fitted standard vehicle glass windows to the barn doors and two big sight windows in the side of the van. These windows come with a hidden built in blackout blind that rolls down from the top to give you that privacy and darkness when you're sleeping and it's got a fly screen in the bottom when you want the breeze coming in without those annoying flies and muzzies. One of the things that I'm most proud about in this van build is some of the smaller detail that you might not have even picked up on. But if you've ever converted the van yourself and tried to box in these funny shapes around the bulkhead, you'll probably appreciate how much of a pain on the ass it can be. So what we've done here was firstly create a storage box to fit on top of the cab and then with, with the front of this we wanted it to follow the curvature of the headliner. So what we did is we cut the back of the ply to allow it to bend and flex where we needed it to follow the curves and then we glued it and pinned it all up so that it would keep its shape. We applied a similar technique with the scrap that runs the length of the van and also on the curved pillars on the back doors. It took us quite a bit of time and effort to get it right, but I think it was well worth it after seeing the end results. With having a raised fixed bed, it's freed up a lot of garage space and this is where we've decided to mount most of the electrical stuff. So I'll quickly talk you through what we've got in this system. It all starts with the 230 volt hookup point that's on the side of the van. So the electricity supply comes into the van and directly into the Victron Multi Plus. From the multi plus to the consumer unit and then the consumer unit to all of the 230 volt appliances and sockets throughout the van now the multi plus is essentially an inverter and a battery charger in one so it gives you 230 volt power to your sockets on or off grid and it charges your battery bank when you're hooked up to the mains electricity we've got three 110 amp hour batteries that power all of the 12 volt appliances and then on this side, we've got a C-Tech DC to DC charger that charges the batteries when the engine is running. And finally, the Victron MPPT charging controller that, of course, takes the power from the 305 watt solar panel on the roof and then charges the battery bank. So that pretty much sums us up for this van tour video. If you enjoyed watching, do us a favour before you get off and hit that like button, subscribe and Press the bell button as well if you want to get a notification on my next video. It's going to be a 2020 extra long wheelbase 4x4 VW Crafter next. So that will definitely be worth to watch. It's got um, it's a 4 berth and it's got an interesting electrical lift up bed in there as well. So yeah, follow along. You can get me on Instagram as well at escape.conversions. So yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Take it easy. You don't need the money when you look like that, do you, honey? Big black boots, long brown hair She's so sweet with her get-back stare Well, I can see you home with me But you are with another man, yeah I know we ain't got much to say Are you 